If you head back towards town though, you can see one of Norway's most spectacular monuments, unveiled in 1983, Svard i Fjell, Swords in Rock. Hey guys, Christopher Norse Rain. This is the second part of the video where I'm talking about Eriks Samlingsjubilea 2022. I went to uh, this big festival this summer, which celebrates 1150 years ago the unification of Norway and the Battle of Hafeshur. Now, if you haven't seen the first part of the video, I recommend that you see that first. It's about uh, Haugesund and what happened there. But for this video, we are going to Stavanger, so let's hit it. For this second part of this video, I went to Stavanger, which is a little south of Haugesund. And this is also where you will find Hafeshfjord, which is the arena of this legendary sea battle. Just like Haugesund, Stavanger has strong ties to the Viking Age. And also here, you will find several landmarks to commemorate this. The first one we checked out is on Ullandshau. Today there is an old comms tower on top of the hill, but this used to be the location of the Tower of Huddle, which was built in 1895. Unfortunately, the tower was seized by the Germans during World War II and transformed into an anti-aircraft artillery base. Due to the damages on the tower, it was later demolished in 1963. What is left of the structure today are these 16 stones, which earlier stood on the battlement surrounding the original tower. All of the locations we visited are fairly close to each other, so if you don't mind biking, you can check out some really nice forest trails on the way too. Our next stop is Ytrabarge which is a peninsula in Hafeshfjord. This is the location of an old hill fort, dating back to the migration period before the Viking Age, and it plays an integral part in the Battle of Hafeshfjord. When King Kjotven understood that he was losing the battle, he, together with some of his surviving men, fled to Ytrabarge. The battle and the aftermath are mentioned in Haraldskvave, the Lay of Harald. Their strength would they try, but he taught them to flee. The lord of the Eastmen, who at Utstein dwells, the steeds of Nokwi, he steered out to the battle, then boomed the bucklers, ere a blow felled Haklang. They grew loath to hold the land against Lufa, the thick neck Aethling, the isle sheltered them. They who were wounded hid under benches, let their buttocks stick up, thrust their heads keelward. Their shoulders shielded the shifty heroes. They were showered with slung shots with the shingles of Gladholm. Home from Hafresfirth hastened the eastward, fled by way of Yaren thinking of ale cups. Ytrabarge is also referred to in Snorri Saga of Harald Fairhair. Then Sjötve fled to a small island with a large fort. Thereafter, all of his men fled, some by ship, some making for land and the road south across Jaren. Walking around Ytrabarge, you can still clearly see the remains of the rampart surrounding the top plateau of the peninsula, where the fort would have been located. The rampart would probably have been fortified with palisades back in the day, but it is unknown what condition the fort was in at the time of the battle. It might at this point only have been ruins left of it. Also here at Ytrabarge, you can find another memorial which was unveiled by King Olav in 1972. 
There is something very typical Norwegian about this memorial. It's very modest and underwhelming, especially considering that it represents one of Norway's most decisive battles in history. Getting to Ytrebarge is only possible by foot or boat, so it's not very accessible either. Something I actually love about the place because that means it's a less attractive tourist spot. If you head back towards town though, you can see one of Norway's most spectacular monuments, unveiled in 1983, Svard i Fjell. Swords in Rock. The biggest sword represents the victor, Harald Fairhair, while the two smaller swords represent the petty kings that fought in the battle too. It is also a symbol of peace as the swords are planted in solid rock, never to be removed. Here at Møllebukta or Mill Bay is where the yearly Hofferskjørtepangen Viking Market is held, which you can see in the background. They were just setting up the market the day I was there, so I didn't actually manage to drop by because I was leaving the very next day. I did, however, manage to attend a lecture by Birgir Birgirsson. He's the author of the book The Black Viking. If you haven't read it, I do recommend reading it. It's a very interesting story about Geirmund Helgarsson. He came from a very powerful family. His father was a king, but because of his appearance, his father disowns him. Later though, when he comes to age, he becomes Iceland's most powerful man. More about that in a later video. Not really part of the Viking Age, but I also managed to check out these petroglyphs in Kvarnevik, also in Stavanger. These carvings date back to the Stone Age, and you can see the importance of ships already back during the Fled Flintstone Age. And that pretty much sums up my experience of Riksamlingsjubilea 2022. Celebrating the Battle of Hofersjur and subsequently the unification of Norway 1150 years ago. Now obviously I didn't manage to see everything that was on the program. The whole thing lasted for about 10 days. But uh, I think I managed to get a decent selection of it. Also, if you know of any Viking festivals in Scandinavia or around the world that you would recommend, then pop me a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, if you want to see more content about the Viking Age, like this video and subscribe to the channel. All support is greatly appreciated. Wrapping it up there, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.